Welcome back to Planner Girl 101. I believe this is a 201 series for die cuts, resizing, coloring, adding them to layers. We're going to be doing a little bit more in depth and it's going to be a little bit longer of a video. So what we're going to do is go ahead and get our piece of paper. We're going to go up to new file, blank file, and I assume everyone's going to either be either printing on acetate or vellum or um, sticker paper or cardstock. So I'm going to pick letter size and this is the orientation that I'm going to choose. It's just a portrait orientation where eight and a half by 11. And then we want to make sure that your resolution is also at 300. Go ahead and click OK and here's our piece of paper. Now we're going to need some things to work on. So again, file, open, and I'm going to head and picking some of these die cut papers. Again, if you want multiple files that are not continuous, you're going to use the control key and or the command key if you are using a, a Mac. I'm using a PC and so you'll all be referring to control key and the shift key while I'm working out here. So as you can see, I wanna have my photo bin popped up here and it has all of those files, including the piece of paper that I created. So Mommy Lay does a fantastic job of giving us different types of digitals to work with. As you can see from this background, it's white and gray check. And what it is, is that means that it's a transparent background. And as you look up here, here's the file name and it, you see that it's a PNG. That's what I love about Mommy Lay's digital files. She's always thinking one step ahead instead of having a um, a JPEG, which is a picture file that has an actual background, it makes our job easier when we're recoloring and cutting and pasting by using a PNG. And I know that was a whole lot of words and a lot of explanation, but you'll see shortly what I mean. So let's start with this digital file. I'm going to go ahead and click over here to grab some of the color that be is fabulous in this January kit. So again, I'm going to use my color picker tool and I'm going to click on her hair because I love that pink. Go back over to my photo bin and I'm going to be working with this cupcake. So obviously I want to click this paint bucket tool because it will fill in these three objects here for this bow. Then you can go back and pick a different color. And if you can't see what you're doing, go ahead and enlarge this. I'm gonna go ahead and do that so I can pick the correct color I want. I want this fantastic burgundy. Go back over to my photo bin, pick your paint bucket tool, and go ahead and add those there. And you can keep doing this for as long as you want. I'm gonna go ahead and do it real quick. All right, now that I've got my cupcake all put together with all of the colors that I want, I'm going to want to take this cupcake and add it to a piece of paper so I can make an insert cover. So let's go ahead and open a new file. We're gonna open this blush, drops, blush stripes file. And as you can see, it comes up with the portrait orientation. I'm doing um, a, an insert cover for a standard size notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and go down here to the tools bar and rotate it to the right. So now I have my port, port, um, landscape orientation just the way I want it. So what you're probably thinking is, well, how am I gonna get this cupcake down to this blush stripes? Here's what you're going to do you're going to go ahead and pick this lasso tool. It's just like you would imagine the Wild West. We're gonna take this bad boy cupcake and we're going to lasso him onto the other paper. So you're gonna go ahead and just hold down and you'll see the marching ants as I've completed the circle. Yay, I've got my cupcake surrounded. And this is why that background being transparent is so helpful. We don't have to erase anything. You're gonna right click and then this box comes up and we're going to copy this in a new layer. And as you can see over here in our layers box that we have this original file, if I just go ahead and get rid of its visibility, you'll see that this guy is still here. How fantastic is that? He's just the where we want him. Now, if you want to have him be on our paper, what you're going to do is go ahead and drag, make sure that this layer is highlighted, and you're going to go ahead and have the selection tool, and you're going to drag him all the way over to your blush stripes. Voila, we now have a cupcake on our blush stripes. 
Here's where you want to resize or move him around. I just go ahead and click on the right hand corner. You can also click on any of the color corners or sides and you'll see that this dialog box comes up. You can resize him by dragging it this way or if you want to um, make him in the same spot but just bigger, you're going to hold down the alternate key and it will grow him in the same spot in which you have. I'm going to go ahead and click that arrow and now I'm free to move him anywhere I want as well. That will look fantastic on my insert cover. Let's go ahead and show the same technique using this JPEG file. This one obviously has a background color. We're going to go ahead and lasso this young lady and the matching answer there, right click, layer via copy, and if I get rid of this background, you'll see that I've got her, but I also have white around. So if I wanted to add her, and we're going to use the selection tool, if I want to add her to my paper, you'll see that I get that white background. I'm going to go ahead and delete her from this background. We don't need that white there, so let's figure out how to get rid of it first. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the layer. I'm going to come back here and make sure that this layer is selected. You're going to go ahead and pick this magic eraser tool. We used this in the last class. We're going to go ahead and click that white and voila, it is now done. Do you see how Mommy Lay has actually made us so much easier by using those PNGs? Now I can go ahead and selection tool, go back to the photo bin, and I'm going to drag her to my cupcake. And you can move her anywhere you want. Make her larger. And there you go. Now, you, as you can see, that she is behind the cupcake. Well, what if I wanted her in front? We'll just remember how we did our sandwiches. So right now, she would be on the bottom layer. Let's move her up to the top by holding and dragging our left. And now she's on top of our cupcake, and she can sit wherever she wants. And there you go. Now I've got the beginnings of my insert cover. Let's go back and work on words. I've got a few words up here that might work very well. There's another tool that you can use to cut and copy and move things over, and that is called this magic wand tool. So the magic wand tool does a fantastic job of picking up words or letters too. So you want to make sure you've got your magic wand tool, that's the one that looks like the fairy, and then you have to make sure that your add selection is on. If you mess up, you can obviously subtract from your selections. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this XO. And you can see is if you keep on clicking, you are grabbing all of the parts you need for your XO. This works fantastic if the background color is um, solid. It would have worked fine with the girl that was um, on that JPEG sheet, but unfortunately she has so many parts and pieces in her, we would miss out and miss some of those, like a sock or her, her hand or her hair or some other element. So that's why the magic wand tool works great in this situation. Again, we've got our marching ants going along and we're going to right click, layer via copy, and there it is. And I'm going to go ahead and Make sure you can't see this so you can see that we've got our XO just fine. We're going to go back down to our, here's our um, photo bin. We're going to grab with the selection tool, as you can see from over here, we need our little arrow pointer. And we're going to go ahead and, whoopsies, we're going to make sure our photo bin is up. And we're going to move it to our insert cover. I want this XO to be more on the top, so I'm going to go ahead and move it up. That blue box around there means that it will grab it. And there you go. I have the beginnings of my insert cover. 
Here's another tip for you. I noticed that this XOXO would look fantastic if it was stood out a little bit more. So here's a little trick. So when as you have the layer selected that you want, I'm going to go ahead and click this. It's layer three. I'm going to right click when that layer is highlighted and then you're going to edit the layer style. This will, and I'm going to move this so you can see the changes, this adds a drop shadow which means that it gives it some depth and you can of course change the angle and which is basically which way the sun is shining on top of it. You can also add a glow to it. You can inside there'll be an inner glow or an outside will be an outer glow. I'm not a big fan of that for this purposes but the bevel is also makes it three-dimensional. Again, Mommy Lay did a great job of making that ombre so I'm going to leave it as is. And this stroke is how you would make an outline for it. I'm not a big fan of that either, so I'm going to go ahead and undo that one. But I really do like the fact that that drop shadow is there. And as you can see that there is a box here, this is the setting the color of the shadow. You can go ahead and pick the color that you want for your drop shadow to be. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that drop shadow to be that nice teal color. If you wanted to change that, you can obviously have your color picker. Move that out of the way. I'm going to pick this bright pink and my drop shadow will be a, a bright pink. The distance is the distance away from it and the opacity is obviously what we learned before. Sometimes the darker the color, the better. Does everyone see how that works? If I move the size of the drop shadow, it makes it a little bit more crisper um, the lower I go. So the distance is the distance away from the shadow of the object. So we're going to move that so it has a little bit of shadow. And the opacity means that it's either going to be super crisp or not super crisp. I'm gonna pick somewhere right in the middle. And as you can see, I've got the XO just the way I want it. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right, let's start assembling our die cut paper. That would be this first paper that we put together originally. So I'm going to go ahead and start dragging things over that I've already made. So I think she would look fantastic on the die cut sheet. And it just makes a copy and pulls it over there. I'm going to go ahead and pick this fantastic cupcake as well. And now here's a trick for you. If you save your layers and in independent parts in a Photoshop file, you'll always have them all together in one file. So I'm going to go ahead and add her to the file as well. One last time, I'm going to go ahead and lasso this young lady. And I'm going to grab her, make her a new layer. And I'm going to go ahead and put the selection tool, make sure my photo bin is up, and I'm going to drag her over here. There she is. I'm not going to add any more die cuts or word art at this time. You guys kind of get the picture. I will tell you that it, the printing process is exactly the same as I showed you in the last video. And don't forget, you can always print on sticker paper. I tend to use matte clear and matte white sticker paper from online labels. If you do have any questions or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to try to answer them for you. And as a preview for the third class in my series, we're going to learn a tool called masking. This is how people make sticker kits and washi tape strips. Stay tuned. See you next time.